I am very excited to kick off today's product demo sessions. Today, you can expect to meet Microsoft Excel industry leaders, suppliers, and software creators. Find out how you can get your Microsoft Excel training, how you can get support from an industry consultant, and what the latest software solutions look like. Our first product demo will be by Squirrel365. Squirrel allows you to build interactive visualizations, value calculations, and applications from your spreadsheet, all with clicks, not code. Designed and developed with the Excel user in mind, if you can use Excel, you can use Squirrel to take your spreadsheets to the next level. Today's product demo session will be on why Microsoft are using Squirrel 365 with Excel. You will learn how the Surface team at Microsoft are selling the message of sustainability using Excel and Squirrel 365. Their aim is to help organizations make more sustainable hardware choices by presenting device energy and admissions data in a compelling, interactive, and visual format within PowerPoint. You will also get the inside trick about how you can do the same with your Excel sheets. Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to this session, why Microsoft are using Squirrel 365 with Excel. And thanks, Elena, for that um, introduction. So most of the presentation today will be taken up with um, an interview with Gareth that I pre-recorded earlier. And Gareth works in the, the, the Surface um, team in the Microsoft in the UK, and he has a really remarkable um, and innovative use of um, Squirrel in, as Elena said, in the in the ex explanation of how their Surface devices match up to companies' sustainability requirements. But before we do that, I just want to do a little bit of background. So the, the, the presentation today is going to be in four sections. First of all, a warm up. It's the first presentation of the morning. We've got to get our brains into gear, and I want you to start thinking. So a minute or two on a warm up, then background on Squirrel on how it works so that you can make sense of what you see when Gareth presents it. Because if you don't understand what Squirrel's doing in the background, then you'll miss out on some of the great things that Gareth is doing. But then most of it, as I say, um, in about 10 minutes time will be Gareth's story uh, in a, an interview that I recorded with him last week. And then hopefully at the end, we'll have a little time for questions. But if not, there are many opportunities through the day to ask us questions about Squirrel and how you might might use it. So the warm up, the warm up is to try and get you to remember that things are not always as they seem. And that's very going to be very important as you think about what Squirrel can do for you. And what I want to introduce you to is two remarkable optical illusions. This is my this one on the screen now is my favorite optical illusion, because actually what it says is what it what it is, is that Believe it or not, these two squares are the same colors. If you've seen this before, um, then you'll know that this is a bit mind bending because that square there and that square are actually the same color. And um, I can demonstrate this by taking this tile and moving it down there. So if I just pull this lever, then that tile moves down and it looks like it changes color, but it doesn't. And that's maybe not that compelling. So maybe we can try it with a dot, see if that makes it any better. But it, it, it does look like the dot changes color. I promise you it's not changing color. So what I did is I added in some curviness so you could take it out. Maybe you can, when you go like that, and is it changing color? It looks like it changes color there, but actually it doesn't. And, and the way to actually show um, the most compelling way on a screen to show that is to put this strip in. So this strip is a single color and matches both of those squares. So they are the same color. It is one of the more mind blowing optical illusions I've ever come across. The only way you can really prove to yourself, if you go online and type in checkerboard or chessboard illusion, you'll see this, print it out, print out two copies, take that square, cut it out and move it. And you'll see that they're actually the same color. It, 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 I've looked at it thousands of times and never worked out how it really works. It is quite remarkable. Um, so that's just to get you thinking about things that aren't quite what they seem, because it says here there are two remarkable optical illusions here. And the second one is that this sec the second optical illusion is that what you are seeing there is actually an Excel spreadsheet. And that's the, 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 the beauty of Squirrels. We turn spreadsheets into these amazing visualizations. You may not want an optical illusion visualization, but there are many others that we'll see today that you may well want to, um, to emulate in, in your work um, to build on top of your spreadsheets. So Squirrel 365 brings your Excel spreadsheets to life. It allows you to put this sort of user interface on top of them, this sort of dynamic animated 
um, capability on top of your spreadsheet so that you can grab attention, keep attention, and stand out from the crowd. It allows you to do things with your spreadsheet skills that were never possible before and can really make you stand out in your in your, in your work and your well, wherever you're presenting data because these are so visual and so interactive and you can share them in powerpoint in email in collaboration tools and in websites and we've already seen a couple of well one of them the, the optical illusion one powerpoint and we'll see more now because to give you an idea of the possibilities i'm going to flip through three or four of these then build one in about two minutes so you understand the background then we'll get into to, to gareth's story so here is a what if calculator and you can imagine how the underlying spreadsheet like this might go in terms of website conversions how i change um, the data here and it all changes on there um maybe i've got some profitability analysis and i want a similar sort of thing so i can change my growth rate and see um what's going on if i increase cost of goods sales if people want to see it as a table i can click to change it as a as a table um, this is a, a favorite one of mine. This is a, a one that um, a, an ex-colleague of mine, Timo Elliott, put together, which is about presentations. Um, um, conferences like this maybe go into presentation overload. And what this does is a little tongue in cheek. It sort of said, well, how many presentations are going on per day? And as the numbers go up, then the poor person on the side, the poor woman on the side gets more and more and eventually it falls off her chair. We've got some options here. You can maybe if you want a, a chap here instead, then you, you get that and he can he can change that. So again, it's it's all of underpinning this, all the calculations are in an Excel spreadsheet. We've just put this user interface on top of it. Maybe a dashboard. So this is a very simple dashboard. Again, remember this is all working interactively inside um, inside PowerPoint and we can see sort of the um, uh, sort of sales for, for various regions, uh, both in tables and charts, or perhaps a more sophisticated dashboard like this one here. Uh, this was created by a, a good friend of ours, Josh Tapley um, from Comcast. And this allows you to um, click on the chart here. And every time you click on it, it changes the view over here. So you can see the more detail about a particular state. Um, it gives you some options to be able to change the, the view in here, maybe change your palette if you wanted to, um, and also gives some help up here about how um, all this holds together and the sort of things that you can do. So, so hopefully those three give you an idea of what you can do from Scroll because all of these were created from Excel spreadsheets using Squirrel 365 and no code. This is not a coding environment. All the, the logic behind all of these is written in your spreadsheet. There's nothing else to do. There's nowhere else to go. You have to do it in the spreadsheet. So you can really leverage those skills that you already have. And as I said before, even this, this is, and we'll look at it in, in Squirrel later to, to demonstrate to you how this can possibly be based on an Excel spreadsheet. But believe you me, it, it is. So how is all this done? So this is done, as we say, using your spreadsheets and clicks not code. So if we come into, well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a, a spreadsheet here. This is an Excel. It's a very straightforward model, the like of which all of you guys would be more than comfortable with. It takes a few factors about sort of online advertising, um, customer um, churn and net promoter score, conversion rates and things like that, and factors them into this model here um, to give you a revenue growth over 24 months, um, added up to, um, uh, to two annual uh, uh, two annual figures here and then pulled down into this table there. There's there's nothing in here that isn't really, I mean, very basic um, Excel capabilities. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to read this into Squirrel. So if I import this into Squirrel, then I get that, it's that same spreadsheet you just saw. It pulls it into the uh, the Squirrel sheet down here. And um, so we see the, the, the essentially the same thing down here, two tabs. Now, importantly, it's not a, a one-way street. If I make changes in here, which I can, which is very important through the design process of what you're when you're trying to create, so I want it slightly differently from my from my Squirrel project. I can export that back out to Excel. So it's not a dead end. I don't bring it in and then it's all. I can import and export to and from Excel. So it's a it's a companion to Excel. It's not. So it doesn't take over from Excel. It really does sit alongside and give you extra capability. And so what we can do here is we can start to add those. The, the only thing you need to be able to do really is to add components from the, the, the many components we have down here um, and then wire them up. So connect them into the spreadsheet. So for example, in the general tab here, the title, I could change the title to be revenue like that. So it changes to revenue, let's get rid of the subtitle there, but in revenue, but, but the magic happens when I use this button to connect it to the spreadsheet. So I can say that's that cell there. So hey, presto, it becomes recurring revenue. If I change that cell, it changes in the, in the chart. And then of course I want to bind it up to some data. Um, and so um, I'm going to then say, I want that to be this set over here. 
use my cursor keys to select the range and confirm. Um, and so that's that, that's given me a number of ranges. I actually want to sw switch to reorient the chart. So it just gives me those like that. Um, and then you'll see it's sort of ABC down here because um, I need to change the labels. So if, again, I can use the cursor keys to get my range and put that in. And then, hey, presto, I, um, I have my chart. Oh, my x-axis there probably needs a little work because I can't see it. So I'll just go in here and orient the labels so they're they're more visible. Um, I take the title off there, and actually, I'll take the title also off the um, the y-axis. So there, I have my have my chart. Um, that's data from my spreadsheet. Um, I might want to add a table in there so I can also see the numbers. So I, that's even easier. I put a data table in there, and again, I just say that I want to a second, put a table in there, and I want to bind it to a range in my spreadsheet. So I just go and find that range there. And select it like that and again hey presto I have that in there um, like that now what I can do is I can the, 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 that's just displaying data but now what I can do is I can add components on here so this slider is going to control say it's going to be a percentage and it's going to control my customer churn which is on this factor here factor sheet here that's monthly churn and now you'll see what's happened I can now preview this as an end user would see it. And everything that is in that model is now being run as I move that slider. So I move that slider backwards and forwards. If I go into test mode, you can actually see, if I come into here, you can see those numbers working um, as, you, as it goes down down here. Those numbers are being calculated. I'm really recalculating the spreadsheet. And, um, and it's, but it's being reflected through Squirrel. And that's exactly the way all of those other models were, were built, those projects were built. Um, interestingly here, if you see it's gone, revenue has gone negative, which never happens. So this is actually a very good way of exercising your model. Even if you never publish it and share it, having a few sliders on top of your model and see what happens is a great way of testing your, your, um, uh, your, your, your Excel models. Um, so then when you've got this to publish it, you simply publish it up to the cloud, and then you say, "I'm going. To, this is going to be Global Excel Summit 2022 live, and I'll publish that up. And that then takes it, takes everything here, packages it up, sends it to the cloud. So I now have something I've built literally in two minutes in front of you. Um, I can then see in my project manager, and if I move it to live, which just makes it shareable, um, then I can." Oh, move it. I've moved it to drafts, apologies, move it back to live, and then I can open it in the browser. So if I bring my this browser window that's just opened on my other screen over here, then you see that I have that model. And I can share that link with anyone. I can put this link into PowerPoint to get it to view, to view in PowerPoint. It all just works having, having done um, all of that. So very quick and easy to be able to um, um, to do that. It's, it's your spreadsheets with all the logic and understanding you have of spreadsheets and clicks on top of it, dragging components, connecting to the spreadsheet, and you're, you're done. Um, and if you want to see more of that, we've got lounge session at two o'clock. We're a more complete demo because we had to go that really quickly. And we've got Squirrel Q&A at 5 p.m. Um, but actually, the, the guts of what we're doing today is Gareth's story um, at, um, at Microsoft and what he's doing. So as I say, this was a, an interview I recorded with Gareth last, last week, last Wednesday, actually. Um, and so, um, Tia, if you could roll the video, we can um, just hear from Gareth and, and what he's been doing with Squirrel. Because it's a, it's a great story. So in your role in the sustainability team, what was the, the, sort of the, the specific problem that you had that eventually you ended up um, solving with Squirrel? Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a great question. I think the challenge is, is, you know, hardware and everything that goes with it isn't a simple um, kind of thing. Um, data is is the massive problem, right? If you are going to present to a customer and you're going to become a trusted advisor and you're going to be able to show transparency across the marketplace, it's not just surface devices that you need to get the data for. You also need to get that for every other Windows 10 device out there every other competitor within the marketplace out there and formulate that and visualize that in such a way that the customer can then take that information um, and then do something meaningful with it. You know, let's, let's face it, hybrid world that we now live in, um, even pre kind of COVID, you were still going to a customer site, um, albeit now it's virtual, and you were still presenting via PowerPoint, right? Or, you know, some other vendor, but, you know, I'm at Microsoft, so this is PowerPoint. Yes. Um, and so, 
what that then looks like is then how do you keep the flow of the conversation going when you're with a customer, either virtually or in person? If you're using PowerPoint as a tool to do that, then surely you have to look at a bit of software that can integrate into that PowerPoint. Right. Because what you don't want to do and what I've seen numerous times is people flitting out of applications. Um, and when you're face to face, yeah, you can maybe get away with that, but I'm not so sure. But certainly virtual, you want to keep the flow going. You want to keep that customer engagement um, and you want to be able to confidently have the tools when you're pitching remotely that allows you to then dynamically move between slides and actually show something visually. Right. Um, and what I found is by working with, with, with Mel and yourself and the Squirrel team is that there is a very simple solution to this. Very, very simple. Um, and, it, and if it's OK, it's probably best I show you. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Okay. I was, I was going to say. Me, um, let me pull that up and now we'll see the power of virtual um, presentations, I suppose. So, I mean, this is kind of just a, a little example um, of, of, of kind of how we would go about that with, it, with a customer. Um, and, and essentially what we would kind of be looking at here is that I want to kind of touch on, well, OK, what is surface and sustainability? Now, we have a very clear and strong message that we work with a lot of Windows 10 vendors. OK, and they do some great work for us and with us and in partnership. So this isn't an exercise of comparing, you know, and, and naming and shaming. This is an exercise really of just showing a customer that the choices that they make in devices are really important. And, and actually, it's a, it's a question when you start talking about sustainability is this notion of moving beyond Energy Star. And I talk about this a lot with customers because you can go out and get the Energy Star credentials of any device in the market. And how do you go about comparing those? What does that actually look like? Um, you know, and really sustainable procurement being at the heart of everything that we do. So you can see now that I'm kind of presenting to you. Um, there's a nice little quote here around, you know, how businesses and users embrace technology when they can trust it. That comes directly from, 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 our, from our CEO. Uh, and Chairman Satya. Um, but then as we move through the slide deck, you can see that if I was to present this with a customer, I'm, I'm faced with a series of links that will take me outside of, of, um, of PowerPoint. You can see it's quite complicated, but how do I then demonstrate the value of our product without, sh without leaving PowerPoint? Right. And, and, and that's where we kind of come to this solution where I'm kind of then looking at, right, well, I know what the, 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 the product um, value adds up, within an organization. I just need a tool to show it. So when we kind of then go on to this kind of tool, this is the tool that then we created. Um, and you're, I just got to be clear, you're still in PowerPoint at this stage. I'm still in PowerPoint, yeah. I haven't moved away from PowerPoint. Um, and what you can actually now see is that I've got various drop downs in PowerPoint. So for instance, I want to be able to demonstrate to a customer very simply, okay, so you're investing in our Surface Go device. Let's just put one on there at the moment. But you're then thinking, about replacing your current infrastructure. Now, of course, you can see the names here. Are, I'm, I'm not here to show that certain other vendors are doing something particularly bad. Yeah. What I'm here is to say, right, OK, well, if I was to pick a vendor of choice, whatever that might look like, um, and I could pick this one here, what I want to be able to do to the customer is, and show the customer is all of the information you saw on the previous slide, all of those links, I want to be able to bring that data that's within those links into PowerPoint. And this quite simply does it. Right. So what I'm now showing you is I'm showing you data from the eco profiles that we've put into Excel that now you can see when you compare like for like devices. Right. So in this instance, we're comparing a Surface Go 2 tablet um, with a, another vendor's uh, device. You see, I put quantity one in there. It doesn't really make much difference. But you can see that there's an over 84, 80 percent saving in the product carbon footprint. That's the CO2 emissions made um, that happen as a result of making that device. So if a customer was looking to compare, they need to then look at their current vendor and go out and find this information. Yes. So what you'll see is that then Surface, this straight away in the flow within the PowerPoint shows, well, I've kind of already done it, but I'm not going to tell you the vendors because that's not my place to do that. But what I'm going to do is, is present a compelling story that gets the customer thinking, that right. gets the customer thinking, right, well, I need to get that information. Now, if you look at it from a product carbon footprint perspective, they're going to make, you know, in this example, an estimated over 80 percent saving in their product carbon footprint. So that's manufacturing, transportation, in use usage, you know, end of life management, all of that type of stuff that makes up that. And I'm not expecting you to kind of know all of that. Um, but then the energy usage is really important as well. So the Energy Star website, which you saw in one of the links before, that then lists and houses a massive Excel spreadsheet, which then pulls all of the Energy Star credentials for every single device that's Energy Star accredited. Right. Clearly, I'm not going to go through all of that spreadsheet with a customer and go into Excel now. Clearly, I want to present that in a way that just keeps the flow. Now, we've done it with Product Carbon Footprint, and you can do it now with Energy Star. So Energy Star, by moving over to Surface in this instance, there's potentially 
up to 70% saving in energy use for that device over the three years. Right. Now, you saw on the previous slide that I also then put the estimated energy cost, the, the cost of electricity. Um, and so therefore, you've got a little bit of money saved, nine pounds per device. Now, clearly, if you were multiplying that by thousands of devices that an organization saves, there's a potential saving there. Yes. And again, that's for a customer to kind of go up and see. And really, then what I what, what we talk about and, you know, again, remaining in the flow, pulling in different data sets in one slide. And this is how Squirrel allows you to do this. What I want to do is show Energy Star rating here. And this is the whole moving behind Energy Star. This is the reason why you might want to choose a, a vendor over another vendor is what's their emphasis on creating highly efficient devices? And, and although, you know, it might not be applicable to you, Donald, but, you know, to a customer that's looking at buying a, a device and is looking to make the right choices, the device that they choose, actually, they want to be able to go out and sustainably procure that and show evidence as to why they've chosen a certain device. And in this instance, when you compare devices, and this is purely looking at Energy Star and how good they are, how, how much better they are within that category of device, you can see that our surface go is nearly 60% better than the entry Energy Star rating. Right. So if you're going to pick a highly efficient device, then logically you're going to pick a device that goes beyond Energy Star. And, you know, and this, is, this is the whole point, right? The, the, the whole point here is to be able to leverage Squirrel as that tool that integrates all of that data via Excel into a PowerPoint that gives this clear visual representation. By going out and generating that data, and, by, and, and, and companies like myself who want to pitch that to another organization, you're going to want to represent it in a, in a very simple visual way. And that's the reason why this tool, it may look very simple, but that's a, a purposeful choice. Yeah. Because you just want to have a couple of cogs that moves the data around and shows the customer and take them on that journey without leaving the slide. But also, um, it's, it's important you could have a slide that just said uh, you could have this all on a slide. But what the great thing about this being dynamic and based on the data that you say is on that, that spreadsheet, Yep. It's, it, it leaves open the possibility of a conversation. So if you are if, if the customer says, well, actually, it's not Lambda, but it's Delta, or actually I've got a bit of Lambda and Delta, you can build up a scenario for them whereby they um, um, where, whereby they can see their their thing coming to life. So then you've done, you've just added a new one, and you can say, well, what happens if I've got two things I'm going to replace with two different Surface devices? So it's, it's dynamic, and that, and presumably that helps with the the conversation, as you say, either virtually or in the room with the, with the, with the customer, so they can see their sort of the way that they do things coming to life. And however much you prepare beforehand, say, well, this is your scenario. We all know that in a meeting like that, someone's going to say, oh, yeah, but what about this department over here? We've got these. Would that make a difference? Yeah, 100 percent. And, uh, you know, and as, as you see now, I'm, I'm I'm keeping the same standard device that the customer is interested in. I'm comparing it with different ranges within this 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 Lambda model. I'm then saying, right, OK, so it's not this. And um, so it's not the 36 version that you're after. Actually, what you're what you're thinking about buying is the 29 dynamically changes every all of the data yeah. it's linked within energy star and it's all there um, and you, and I don't have to move. yeah and the other thing i noticed is that um like at the top with your scenarios that, that you can you can preload sort of so if you do have a complex environment you can sort of complete preload a scenario for someone so they can see what's going on so yeah exactly that so you've got this um you know um you know scenarios that the customer might say to you well actually we we we, we use a device like this 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 and this and, and they can potentially use this tool they can go away and create it themselves Right. Um, because, you know, I can do that for them. I can then show, well, this is the information that you've given me and this is me presenting it back to you. But you know what? The way it works is, is, is when the customer goes out and finds this kind of information. What you're seeing there, um, I think it's important because many people, uh, most people wouldn't have heard of Squirrel. But that is essentially a dynamic user interface on top of an Excel spreadsheet. So really, the alternative you would have had would have been to pop out to Excel, all that data in there. Uh, yes, you could have put sort of drop downs and things in there, but you would have been outside PowerPoint. And the beauty of the Squirrel in this instance is it's a, it's a streamlined interface that you can make what you want. Um, and it just allows you to be able to have a clean interface in front of the customer that allows you to to make these scenarios um, clear and um, and have a, an impact on them and, and their understanding of what you offer in terms of, of, of the sustainability. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, you know, the, the, the point of this is, is that you want a visual representation. And as you said, I can just leave PowerPoint. But as you know, within a customer call, you know, it, you're not going to be able to just keep flitting, flitting. You're losing interest. What you yeah. want to do is keep that customer, keep that, 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 that organization within that flow of that presentation. And, you know, yes, I could I could move out to another application. But the power for me, certainly when I'm with my customers, is being able to show them visually what we're talking about, but also get the customer thinking about well, what about this product and if, if the drop down i just go to the drop down and change it what about this product oh, actually we're not looking at in the, in the in the example set where it was the surface go no we're actually looking at a surface laptop or a pro or a different device within the range and we can actually just do it there and then right and, and they can see that that's the sort of thing that maybe they want to 
you know, if you think about a customer making faster decisions, yeah. you, know, you know, if you think about the time layer, the time uh, um, of, of a sales cycle, you, you want to be able to, if they're saying, you don't want them to come back to you a day later and say, oh, actually, can you show me what it looks like on a laptop? Or can you show me, you got to kind of want to say, well, well, should we compare? Should we do this now? Yeah. And, you know, and I can pull up the different device ranges. I can pull up the different other um, devices and say, you know, ha have a play. Tell, tell me what you're thinking. So you have any other plans for, for Squirrel? Yeah, you know, so, yeah. So in my new role, absolutely. Yeah, there was always, um, when I spoke to Mel um, before, there was always going to be another project. Um, right. um, and I kind of had an idea. You know, for me, there's a lot of data and there's a lot of Excels when you start positioning return on investment of yep. devices. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, it's very boring. You know, if you're going to go through an Excel and you're going to start talking about return on investment and doing this. And what I've identified is a, a document that we use is that it, it, it's not clunky. It's got a lot of data in. It's got a right. lot of reference points in. But what it is, is it's an Excel. Yes. And so if I'm if I'm if I'm looking to present return on investment or total cost of ownership, um, then I'm going to need a tool that's integrated into PowerPoint exactly like I've done with the sustainability. Right. Yes. So, so the plans would be is how do I integrate that? You know, what data do I need? How do I then pull those kind of um, data points in and then leverage PowerPoint and Squirrel to essentially position that in a visual way? I know we're, we're, we're coming up against time, but there's one thing I wanted to cover. You won an internal award at Microsoft on the basis of some of this. Yeah, yeah no, well, it's quite cringy now, isn't it, talking about <laughs> it? But yeah, I, don't, yeah I, I suppose, you know, you know, Microsoft Microsoft culture is built around growth mindset. It's built around going out there and, and you know, and understanding that kind of anything's possible. Our, our, our mission is to empower every person and, and, and organization on the planet to achieve more, right? And one of the one of the challenges that we had, like I said, in the team was around sustainability and how do you quickly visualize this to a customer? How do you get a point across? How do you get that value across? Um, you know, and, and obviously the work that that I was fortunate to be able to do within sustainability and then the partnership that I had with Mel and, and the Squirrel team in order to develop this, um, you know, really does then start supporting and helping other people, helping our customers, um, helping helping my colleagues and my peers, um, and, and then showcasing broader across different technologies within Microsoft, what is possible with surface and sustainability. Right. Um, you know, and as a result of that, yes, you know, it, it sounds a bit cheesy, but you know, as a result of that and, and the work that we then did, there's certain role model awards each year. Um, and I was I, and I was fortunate enough to win the role model for sustainability. Um, you know, and, and certainly the Squirrel platform was a part of that in terms of what we were able to do to support others. Well, that, that, that's great. And and I like it particularly because the way you describe it is sort of the growth mindset. It's, it, it's allowing individuals to make a difference. And that's and we, as we touched on earlier, one of the things that we see about Squirrel is it allows people because let's face it, just about everybody in the world in business knows Excel. Um, and then, so what they could, what we see Squirrel is allowing people to do that much more, and they don't have to reach out to a development team. They don't have to reach out to some more technical people. They can just do it based on their Excel knowledge and do exactly the sort of thing that you're you're doing. So it's it's a great story. So you've got you've you've, you've it's good for the the Surface team. It's good for your customers. It's good for you as an individual. It's yeah, it's all it's good for us to have a customer like you using the product. So yeah, it's a, it's a great story. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Gareth. Thank you so much for for taking the time to to share that with us. It's um it's been absolutely brilliant, and we look forward to seeing your 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 next ROI um, <laughs> presentation um, inside PowerPoint delivering out to your customers. So thank you, thank you so much for talking to us. No, and thank you for, for for taking the time to listen and inviting me. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Gareth. So yeah, so there that was um, Gareth Koskar um, from the Surface team in Microsoft UK saying how he is one Squirrel project um, that he embeds in PowerPoint and and. It articulates his sustainability story for the surface line to to his customers. It's a it's a it is a great story. Um, we're almost out of time, so I just want to say if there are any questions that you have about this, um, uh, or want to see a longer demo at two p.m. in our lounge session, I will be doing a demo based on what you saw earlier, but going into more detail and going a little more slowly. We have a five p.m. session again in our lounge area. Um, for some, come and meet some of the other um, squirrel members. I see Mel uh, is on the chat here, and she'll be in there with us. Um, if you want to, you already want to try it, you can go and see some of the examples that are showcased. You get a free account, um, which gives you one, uh, as many projects as you want, but you can one to share with other people. Um, and um, so you can go and have a look at that. And that's free. That's, that's not a trial. It's a free account. You can use that uh, as long as you want. Um, and as I say, we're out of time for questions now, I'm afraid. But if you go on the platform, both Mel and I are around most of the day, Donald McCormick, Mel Shepard, just um, direct messages on the platform. We're happy to either answer in chat or jump on a call or a meeting or whatever. Um, but uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed Gareth's story. I hope you're now thinking about all the remarkable things that Squirrel could do for your Excel spreadsheets. And um, with that, I will say thank you very much and hand back to um, the conference.
Thank you, Donald. This was really great. Thank you for being with us second year in a row. And yes, I would definitely um, encourage everybody to go and visit um, Squirrel 365's launch sessions. And they'll be able to, I can see some questions coming through in the chat. Um, they should be able to give you uh, detailed answers in there. Um, thanks, Donald, once again. And I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.